Hi everyone, I hope you're good guy. Welcome to a new video. So today I'm gonna explain how I made my uh, second jam with the analog rhythm. So I'm gonna show you in detail each track, how I made them. And I will take time as well to talk about scene and performance. Just gonna remind you what the jam was about. So it was something uh, like, like this. So I had the scene activated and I can just drop. I have effect on the big performance. And you can see, even though I have the right playing here, you cannot hear it this here because of the scene. But if I change the scene, so here for example it's locked, and I can activate it like this. So I will explain to you later how I set my scene and the performance. But first, let's start with uh, each track individually and how I made them. So. I'm just basically gonna show you the value and like this, if you like the sound, you can just uh, recreate it. We have the kick here, which I used the BG Classic and you can check the value. So for kick, I don't really have any special tips. The only thing is always playing with the pitch and then you have uh, the sweeping time and the sweeping depth. Like it's basically a pitch envelope that is applied to your kick and here you check how long is the pitch envelope, the length of the pitch envelope, and here is the amount. So really playing with this three uh, value to really get something, there is no secret recipe, you just have to try. One thing though I like to do, some if I don't want a too long kick, you have the hold here, so I always put the hold in the maximum, but then I will use a very short DK, you can see here is 47. So this way I still have a lot of body, but I don't have something too long with a too long tail because which when you use rumble can be a problem. And then you can see, it's, I think it's the sine wave, this and the tick, it's number three. And no sample, no filter. I just reduced a little bit, maybe the high frequency, but it's not that much. And the amp, you can see the overdrive is just three. So this is interesting because you're gonna see how it's subtle, but it had this very nice punch to your kick. So yeah, and then no LFO. So that's it for the kick. Second element. So that's my kind of bass sound, kind of the main the one which is playing the whole track. And I use the dual VCO. And you can see I use here the frequency and ring modulation together. The waveform, I'm not sure, but it's looking like a kind of so. And the other one, I don't know, I need to check the manual, but these two on the side is two different waveform and you can see I have the second oscillator they tuned one octave upper and yeah the main thing here so no sample the main thing here is obviously the filter having the low pass filter and the filter down with the filter envelope which is kind of drastic you can see it's plus 34 and with a very short decay here so you get this plucky kind of bass. And then, oh. I don't have a drive and then delay and reverb. So this, I will come back to it later when I talk about the, the SFX, but yeah, a bit of delay and reverb to make it change. And I've applied the LFO. So for the performance at the beginning, it's at zero. So it's not moving. And but I've preset the LFO this way. So for example, if during a track I don't want to have like you know to always turn on the cutoff to make it evolve during the track, I can apply a LFO so like this is modulating automatically and I can modulate other things during the track. So that's what I'm doing at the beginning of the track. There is no LFO, it's like me controlling, but then if there is a part or when I want to play more with the drums, the other drums or the other key elements, I can just add the LFO, I put plus six, and the way I said the LFO. Uh, it's like a triangle and it's modulating slowly. So here you have the speed at one and the multiple at 16. And yeah, so pattern goes like this. The length is 16 bar as well. And I still, I don't know how I can show you which note is playing, but it's always playing the same note. I thought the note will appear in chromatic mode. But the thousand, so I don't know. Okay, let's move on into uh, the third one, which is this. 
So this I use the dual VCO again and frequency with ring modulation together as well. The waveform, you can, one if I don't know honestly with this waveform, but you can see which one and you can see which one I pick up anyway. And this one is pitched very high. So if That sounds not bad like this, actually. But yeah. And the balance at 11. So again, this is just like I tweak until I find something I like. You can see it's like kind of a 16 pattern. It's like very repetitive. It's like 16 pattern and you can see there is some modulation and things going around, so there is no sample. To filter, I use a bandpass, which is modulating. You can see it's very sharp, the envelope, so if I press here, I, make, I can make it longer, but I wanted something sharp. And amp, a bit of overdrive, obviously it's going into delay and reverb. And you can hear there is some LFO modulating the filter, so... Here again, I put randomly the speed and the multiplier, multiplier but I like it. Uh, it's plus 3 and 4, I don't know. And same again, triangle is just to have this kind of slow movement. And yeah, plus 25, and it's obviously modulating the filter frequency. And that's for our second sound. No, third sound, sorry. All right, next up is... Uh, this one, so for this, I use the sample as you can see. So it's a sample from my library and... Uh, I will put the link, the sample is... It's my black hole techno is the scent number six. Usually it's like one shot scent. And I don't know if I can. Yeah, but obviously, because of the effect, you cannot listen to the original. And yeah, low pass filter. So the sound was already plucky, so I didn't need to apply a filter envelope. Uh, a bit of drive. And yeah, nothing crazy. You can hear that there is an LFO as well. Same, you can see the, the filter going down and up. So again, 116. I don't exactly how many bar is like moving, but it works. And yeah, the step is the length of the pattern is 12 steps. So if you go here, you can see first step. And yeah, pretty simple, but it works. Then here I have my rumble. So the rumble, for sure, I use, I resample the kick with the rumble, or I use, actually, I think I use, I think I use the, the rumble from the previous, from the, my first jam, and I just, and I just reuse it, and probably the start and the end. Are different, but I might have used the same. Actually, I don't. I don't know. But yeah, I will put it in the description if you wanna know how I do the rumble and how I resample it. I've already showed that in the previous one, so no need to stay too long. Then it's just filtered, and yeah, nothing crazy. I didn't even apply LFO. I think because probably you see here how the waveform. I probably record it with the LFO because you see the waveform is uh, very small at the beginning, so I mean like here is gonna be your kick because it's playing all the time in the same time than the kick. I mean at the same position than the kick. So at the beginning is playing a low volume and it's kind of a side chain already, if we can say so. And then the volume is going up when it's starting to be offbeat. Okay. All right, so now I have this kind of things. You can see it's sample. Again, I use a sample of mine. Uh, which is called, it's from my esoteric techno sample pack, it's texture, and yeah, it's kind of noisy things, but you can see there is some modulation. 
going on here. First, I pitch it up because it was like this and I wanted something more like noisy. So yeah, this is my second jam. I wanted to experiment a little bit more with the sampling and import my own sample to see how I can tweak it. Because it's something I'm not using the often sampling and like or taking like sample and like tweaking them. I usually create everything from scratch. So that's why I use this a little bit more than usual. And here you can see there is a high pass filter and you can hear it's modulating by the LFO already, but yeah, you can see the value high pass filter. And if I go to LFO for sure, yeah, it's modulating. Again, here the value of the speed and the multiplier is just things experiment. Here it's just the SOTUS. This. Ah, yes, because actually this is for the this is for the sidechain because it's on the volume actually. So that's what I've shown. I've set it by trigger, so every time it's play, it triggers the LFO. And you can hear there is if I remove the yeah, you you lose the sidechain effect. You see. And yeah, I think the modulation you hear from the sample it was in the original sample. But yeah, it's just like kind of creating the ambience with this one as well. Okay, then we have this kind of percussive and I use a sample as well. So the sample I use is uh, this one from my peak time techno sample pack, the send number six. And I actually just pitch it up a little bit, uh, pitch it down, sorry. And you can, there is a filter as well. I pass filter with a bit of envelope to make it move like this way, but yeah. Bit of overdrive, I think, yeah. And then it's going delay and reverb, and basically delay and reverb is what makes all. If I remove, it's pretty flat, but obviously that makes everything, no LFO. And yeah, that's it for this one. So yeah, the pattern is just, why not? And the step it's 12. Yeah, that's it. So now this one, this is like the second melodic element. You can see the step it's it's 15. So that there is no reason, it's just like was sounding nice with 15. And again, because you have all of different uh, pattern lengths for all of different tracks, it's kind of always creating something new, always something emerging, evolving. So for that, I use sample as well again. The thing is, the reason why it's basically I use damage sample as well, it's because I took this in a holiday and I just made track just by using this. So obviously it's great as a drum machine, but like if you wanna use more like a groove box to make a full track out of it, uh, it's kind of limited to make like a melody and stuff with just the the scent, the, the drum engine. So that's why I use uh, sample a, a little bit more. And also the fact that I want you to try a little bit to see how how it does and if I manage to do something. So then here the sample, it's big time techno as well, sent 23. So that's the kind of original track. And so here, here you have minus 24, here you have minus 18. Minus 12. Ah, yes, now you can see it actually. Then you have minus 6, then minus 7, and then minus 3. Yeah, that's the melody and the sound. So was the sample, and I haven't done, I just pitch it up a little bit. But otherwise, I haven't done much. Bit of obviously the low pass filter is always nice like this you can like kind of modulate your filter along the track and having like some more like muffled 
moment then. And then the amp. A bit of overdrive, delay reverb. No NFO. And yeah, that's the second main uh, lead with this one. All right, and then we have all of our hats. So we have our close eye hat here first. Classic 16 close eye hat. Uh, it's within step, but basically because it's a 16 close eye hat, it doesn't really matter the length. But yeah. So for this one, yeah, I used the here. I used the close eye hat classic, and nothing special to say. It's hats is like trying to find the the right tuning, the right one which is fitting the track is by here. Unfortunately, I don't really have any tips. I'm struggling sometimes as well to find the hats fitting well the the track, especially with the right. The hats close eye hat and open hat is fine, but usually the right I'm struggling a little bit. No sample and no nothing, no filter. Everything is just maybe a bit of over. No, not even overdrive. Just a bit of reverb, like classic. Open a hat. Here it's a bit more interesting. Here I use the the trigger condition. So it's every three bar. You know, it's every three bar. It's playing the 16th step. Otherwise, it's not played. See, not playing, playing, not playing not playing and then now it's gonna play again. So I explained that as well in the previous explanation. So if you wanna find out more, go to check how you can use uh, this trigger condition. You have uh, basically a lot more things that you can use. The sound itself, uh, it's just the synth engine, which is the open hat classic, pitch it up, And yeah, nothing special, always of beat, obviously. Classic. Maybe a bit of, no, not even overdrive, a bit of reverb, and yeah. And I really like how it was playing with the, the way it interacts with the cloud I had. Because you have this kind of chalk option because of the two bar in the middle. So that's one thing, nice. And then I have two right, so, I have this one and this one. This one is, you can hear how ryth rhythmical is. I mean like, it's a bit like different than the, than the, this is like more like a kind of classic, right? And you can hear like this is more like, there is a bit more rhythm to it. And the reason why it, if you check the velocity, you can see here you have 15, 15. 15, no, and the one of beat is 84. This you have 15, 42. So this one is on the beat, 42. Here are 42. Then 15, 15, 15, and it's kind of creating this tan 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 and that's I was just like kind of experimenting but yeah here the velocity really give the sound uh, another dimension so in terms of what I've done with you can see here I'll just share with you the is I think it's the symbol classic Minus 48, the tuning tone, plus 63, and 97, 53. And you can hear there is reverb, but there is a filter, but I think it's just maybe to tame a little bit the high frequency, but yeah, it's very noisy. So I kind of just remove a little bit that, which is kind of nice as well, but with the filter open, but I, I prefer like this and a bit of overdrive. And yeah, I really love all of the art and symbol on this analog rhythm. I really love them. They just sound classic, but they sound good and they work. <laughs> that's so that's cool. And so the second one, 
Well, you can hear, I think there is velocity as well, modulation. Yeah, you can see 40, 80, 127, 80, 40, 80, 127, 80. So this, if you're familiar with my video, it's something I do a lot. It's basically going up until the offbeat and then down. So yeah, it starts like, like, like this, up, down, up, down, up. And the one which is the upper velocity is always the one offbeat, down, up, down. And so here basically all of the one on the beat are at 40 and then all of the one which are uh, between the two beats but not off beat as well, they are all 80. Well, I don't have enough finger to go there, but and then all the one who are off beat are 127. So this way it's like this. And yeah. So I use the symbol right and yeah, tuning plus eight. I use the type B. This is again it's just experimenting. I might do tutorial for each element and going over it. But I need more time with the machine to really know what I'm talking about and don't just make say bullshit. And yeah. Then here nothing else. Nothing else. And yeah. That's it for the all individual element. All right, so one thing before to jump into the scene and performance, there is this field that I use exactly the same way than in the previous live performance. So basically, I have everything, and when I press, it still gets rid of the kick and the rumble, and I release. So this is super easy to do. You just go to your kick, for example, and when you hold it and you go to trigger, you can see there is this fill with the power on top, which means that it will always play, except when I'm playing, when I'm pressing fill, it will not play. So I've done this as well for my rumble, which is playing at every beat as well. All right, now let's jump into the scene. So on my uh, first performance, I use scene to have low cuts. Basically, every time I will trigger the scene, we do a look at all right that's what what i wanted to do and what i was doing is i was triggering the locket and then if i wanted for example to let's say it was just the close i had and the open hats playing and then i wanted to uh, remove the locket and quickly add the hats when the sounds drop i had to do this manipulation very fast and it was not really convenient and someone kindly in the comment recommend me to basically use the scene to mute and unmute my hats so basically that's what I've done. I've used my scene to trigger look at and mute and unmute my hats. So you can see here all the hats will be playing. Let me actually just put the kick bass and the hat because that's what's play. And if I'm here and I press play, okay, here you can see I have all of my hats who are supposed to play, but I don't hear them. And the reason being that they are all mute. And the way I've done that, it's basically if you go to amp, you can see for the amp from the close I hat is at zero. And if I go to the open hat, it's at zero. If I go to the cymbals, it's at zero. If I go to the cobalt, it's at zero as well. So, which means that every time I press this scene, it's kind of mute all of my hats. And what I've done is basically this part, this two is going to be all the hats mute. Here, this two is going to be the hats, the close I hat and the open hats just playing and the cymbals mute. And this is going to be the close I hat, the open hats and this cymbal playing, but not this one. And this one is going to be the close I hat, the open hat and the cobalt playing. Obviously, because you have like a choke mode trigger, you cannot have both playing in the same time. So there was no point to have like all playing together because they are both the track 11 and track 12 have like a their trigger full so it's either so when this one is activated it's this one playing you cannot have both and this one have the priority on this one so that's why I've done my scene like this and all the one down 
are exactly the same than this one, but with a locket. So this way, if we come back here, so here we don't have ads playing, lock, no has playing, locket. Here, close I hat open hat playing, close I hat open hat playing with the locket. This way, if I level here, if I click here, obviously I will have my rat, I will have the locket deactivated and my right playing. Press here, I have all of my hats playing, but I have the locket. And if I want to get rid, for example, of the right, let's say I, I, it's my the drop, and I want to get rid of the right but still have my close hat and my open hat, I can because if I press here, I will have just my close hat, open hat playing. Up if I remove the effects, obviously. So, the way I've put them, it's really helped me to kind of having short breakdown. And if I want to get rid of the ad, up. If I want to get rid of the ad, when I drop, I just press this one. If I want to put it back during the locket, if I want to go progress progressively, or here, if I want this one to play, I have to come here and unmute this one. Yeah, here for this work I really use in really to do nice arrangement with my hat and my locket. And uh, the way to do that, it's the locket. It's you have to. I show you this in the previous video. You just have to go to your scene and to put your alpha filter. And then after it's depending of your kick, but you set the value you want, and you do the same with the rumble. I usually use a bandpass because like this, just if you use a. Uh, a low cut, you will obviously don't hear your rumble anymore. So using a bandpass is kind of a good compromise. You don't get rid of all of the low frequency, but still uh, you can hear and uh, feel you rumble a little. And then after it's all of the mute. So that's how I've programmed uh, all of my scene. And then you have two here. So this one is, you need this sense, it's basically, I pitch up five semitone. If I go to this track here, if we go to the tuning, you can see 5 semitone. And this one... This one is applying a low pass filter to uh, any of these elements which are red. Anyone except the kick and the rumble basically and the bass. If you go to, you see you have a low pass filter everywhere. So this is, I create this, this is, I need to walk around a little bit more, but for example, if you have like, uh, let's say this one playing, and then you have a, sh a breakdown, a short break, and you wanna get rid of everything, you know, if you have this very effective, you will do like, you go from something with all of the element to not that many so it's kind of I use the low pass filter I could have used the mute I need to walk around and try both which one is the best but this way I've got this very change of dynamic from something very busy to something very quiet and it's work well so usually I will have as well uh, this one the filter will be more down so it will be more like this but yeah that's how I use it I, you can see I use it more like a kind of uh, arrangement purpose, like trying to being able to easily mute, unmute, or use the locket. And yeah, let me know how you use it. And I'm really curious. This is something I will work again and again. Every new track, new performance, I will try to find new way around. And yeah, let's uh, jump into the performance now. The way I use it, so I use four. On the first performance, I use one, but this time I use four. So the first one, let me actually... I guess you can guess it's kind of a washout. So what I'm what I'm doing basically, uh, it's 
I'm sending all of my truck to delay in the reverb. You can see they are all going to the maximum. So everything go to the delay and reverb. Oh, and basically I didn't talk about SFX. I will talk about, but then after, if you go to your SFX, you can see that the feedback is going a little bit more for the delay. The amount of the delay sent to the reverb is going a little bit more. And the reverb, you can see the decay is going longer and the high frequency, which were a little bit down, uh, go back up. So it's kind of creating this uh, washout effect. I will come back to the effect after the performance. The second one, if I, I'm gonna get it. You're gonna hear what, oh, actually no. Second one, you can hear it's opening the filter of the two of this end. So, if you go to filter, you can see the filter here, and this one as well. And this one as well, actually. It's the GK. So that, that's what this one does, opening the filter. This one is, so this one is, you can hear it's pitching up. So the same way that the scene here was doing it, like pitching up five semitone, I've used it with the performance. So here, the more I will press, the more uh, it will be pitch. So I've done it for my bass end, but I've done it as well for my, um, For this melody is the tuning of the sample, which is going up five semitone. It's plus six, but by default it's plus one. So it, by going plus six, it's going plus five semitone. And yeah, it's kind of creating weird vibe as well in the same time. So and you can play with the pressure and get different kind of pitch. You get this kind of weird vibe, which I like it. So I left it. And then this one here, it's one I saw online who was saying like people saying what to play with the decay basically the more i press the pad the more the decay will get shorter so i've done that for the hats i've done that for almost everything actually you see all of the hats i i think i've done it with the amp but yeah you can see so you have to put your hold at one not in auto because if you put that auto you still have like this stuff which uh, i don't really know how to react but if you put to one you don't have like sustain and it's working well with the gk and you can see here all of here maybe i use the filter yeah here i use the filter envelope the gk same here same here for the sound three so yeah this way when i you see how everything become sharper and if I release it become back to normal so that's something as well I need to find a way I like how it is now but I feel it can be improved but I really like this idea because you can really like especially during a break for example can have everything down and then after what can be good is first at the beginning of your break you reduce by pressing you reduce the decay so you get something very sharp and very low in dynamics so very low and then as much as i release the, the velocity so the decay was gonna get bigger but i start to press as well the opening here this one which is gonna open the filter so it creates this tension, the GK open, the filter open, and then I have, once I have almost my filter open, I start to press this one, which this one's gonna bring the washout, uh, which kind of accentuate even the tension. So that's really great in combination of these three for your breakdown. I think I've used it during the jam, and that's a good way to, yeah, have a nice break and bring tension. 
So yeah, other thing, obviously, the washout I've assigned it to the knob. You can see during the jam, I'm kind of struggling with my two fingers. It's because with the pad, I I think I've the way I set my performance. Uh, like the delay, the send of the delay and the decay of the reverb, it's too much, was too big. So basically, it's very hard to be like, um, by pressing, it's very hard to be precise. So it's going straight away all over the, the place. So by using the knob, it's a bit uh, nicer. But you can see in the video, I don't go much more than that, which shouldn't be the case. I should have like more range to be able to be more precise. And yeah, that's it for the performance. So again, if you have any tips how you use performance, put them uh, in the comment. And yeah, well, finally, things the FX I didn't uh, show, but yeah, I'm just gonna show you uh, nothing. I think it's more or less the same than last time. The delay, kind of a ping pong with uh, one eight dots and a bit of high pass filter, and then the reverb. No pre delay. Ninety one the DK. Removing the low frequency. Timing a little bit frequency and yeah uh, yeah here the obviously the delay sent to the river but then I don't have any distortion and I don't have any compression I really don't like that much and I didn't use the NFO that's it for today guys I hope you like do not forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done it yet and see you soon guys bye bye